Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Today we discuss Limited Liability Partnership. I am Dr. Jaswan Saini, Associate Professor, Department of Law, MD University, Rohtak. And today we discuss the various aspects related to Limited Liability Partnership. Basically, this concept introduced in the year of 2008. And after that, various new changes introduced in this concept. So, first of all, learning outcomes of this discussion. These learning outcomes develop that what we learn after discussion of this topic. Very first, after discuss this topic, we develop our understanding about the fundamental structure and characteristics of limited liability partnership and know about how this form of business is different from others. Various forms of business, sole proprietorship, partnership firm before 2008 governed by the Indian Partnership Act 1932 and companies under Companies Act 2013 before this Companies Act 1956 was applicable. And after 2008, a new concept introduced by legislature that is known as limited liability partnership. Second, to gain knowledge of the legal and regulatory requirements for forming and operating an LLP, including the registration process, corporate formalities and reporting obligations. As usual, companies are incorporated under the jurisdiction of registrar of companies on the same pattern the limited liability partnership also incorporated under the same jurisdiction of registrar of companies and lot of formalities need to be fulfilled with this limited liability partnership registration process and uh, reporting obligations, etc. Third one, to appreciate the concept of limited liability and its significance in protecting the personal assets of partner in an LLP, mitigating financial risks and promoting entrepreneurship. In this concept of LLP, we protect the personal liability of partners. In the earlier days, when we governed by the Indian Partnership Act 1932, there is no any difference between partners and partnership firm. But after 2008, the entire scenario changed after introducing this concept of limited liability partnership. Nowadays, the partners are not liable as a limited liability partnership. Partners are liable if they are governed by Indian Partnership Act 1932. If the partnership start under Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008, then there is no any liability arise on the part of partners. Introduction about this concept, Limited Liability Partnership is an incorporated partnership formed and registered under the Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008 with the special features of limited liability and perpetual succession. These two features of limited liability and perpetual succession, these features as usual applicable which applicable in the case of companies. Limited liability indicates that liability of members in case of company and liability of partners in case of limited liability partnership 
are limited how much limited limited up to the level of unpaid share part unpaid share part up to that extent liability is limited and perpetual succession indicate that there is no any effect on the working of company from the exit and entry of the members and the same thing we applied in case of limited liability partnership partners come and out but there is no any effect on the working of partnership firm as a limited liability partnership firm the act come into the existence in 2008 but in real sense come into the force on 31st march 2009 limited liability partnership act was culmination of extensive efforts by various experts committee legal experts renowned jurists and experts play very important role in the introduction of this limited liability partnership these efforts dates back to the bhat committee in 1972 and continued through committees such as nayak committee in 1992 abid hussain committee 1997 Gupta Committee 2001, Naresh Chandra Committee 2003, and J J Irani Committee 2005. These committees play very important role in introduction of this limited liability partnership concept in business arena. Definition of limited liability partnership is very simple and defined in section 219 of the Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008. Limited liability partnership means a partnership formed and registered under this act. The beauty of this act is here no doubt the limited liability partnership is incorporated but they use word registered so in this act both words are allowed both words are similarly used for same meaning incorporated or registered so we remember here this introduction of limited liability partnership means partner limited liability partnership no doubt incorporated but registration word is also an appropriate word for the functioning of this partnership and this registration word is an word of ordinary parallels as per section 3 of this act partnership has the following characteristics which define here one is this body becomes a corporate body this limited liability partnership become a corporate body it means when we talking about the corporate body it means rest of the corporate laws are also applicable on these bodies and this body become a separate legal personality separate legal person means juristic person separate from their partners body corporate means that's different from those who establish the same different from those who operate the same different from those who are the owners of this corporate body and this body incorporated under this act and become legal separate legal entity separate from all basically we consider separate here means separate from those who establish the same separate from those who manage the same and you remember two human agents here one is member another is board of directors in case of company but here members here are partner board of directors sometimes are expert group of persons but in case of limited liability partnership firm that may be may be i use word may be the partners may be some paid persons that's depend on the agreement that depends on the willingness of the partners limited liability partnership shall have perpetual succession the same characteristics available to the companies 
and here these same characteristics given to the limited liability partnership firm after incorporation. It means there is no any effect on the firm, partnership firm from incoming and outgoing of the partners. Partners come and out, but there is no any effect on the functioning of the partnership firm and there is no any effect on the governing bodies of the partnership firms. Any change in the partners of a limited liability partnership shall not affect the existence right, existence rights or liabilities of the limited liability partnership. It means there is no any effect on the partners right, on the existence or on the liability of the partners. As per section 4 of this act, that is very clearly remarkable beauty of this act is here defined in section 4, provision of the Indian Partnership Act 1932 shall not apply to a limited liability partnership. Section 4 very clearly differentiate between the partnership firm established under Indian Partnership Act 1932 and limited liability partnership established under limited liability partnership act 2008. So, LLP is not a partnership under partnership act 1932, this act differentiate this is the different one. So, section 4 basically highlight the difference between partnership firm before 2008 and another partnership firm after 2008. And they are the key features of limited liability partnership is an alternative corporate business, alternative corporate business of whom, alternative corporate business of companies. This is the vehicle that provides the benefits of limited liability. With there is the two concept involved in this one. One is partnership firm, second is company. Benefit of limited liability is given here and the beauty of partnership firm is also available here. This act allow the partners the flexibility of organizing their internal structure as a partnership based on mutual agreements. Mutual agreements arrived between partners play very important role or vital role to decide the functioning in the limited liability partnership. Limited liability partnership structure empowers entrepreneurs that empowers the entrepreneurs, professionals and service oriented enterprises including those in scientific and technical fields to establish business entities that are commercially efficient and according to their specific needs. Commercially efficient and according to their specific needs. It means both concepts are available here, concept of limited liability and concept of companies and concept of partnership firm which governed by mutual agreements. Due to its structural adaptability, LLPs are a favorable option for small and medium size businesses and can be appealing to venture capitalists for investment. Those who are interested to run any business with these special features, that is the welcome step for the them. That is the opportunity for those who are interested to working as an the feature of company with the agreements concept of firms. So, in the absence of an agreement between the partners, the provision of legislation govern their rights. It means two options are available in this concept of limited partnership. If you govern by the mutual agreement, that is good. If you are not ready to govern by mutual agreements, then legislative provisions also available for decide the rights of partners or their obligations. Partners in LLP 
are the agents of the llp but are not the agent of the other partners so important point is here for example this is abc limited limited liability partnership and here x is the partner and rest of the partners are y z so x is the representative or you may be say agent of this abc partnership firm means they are not x is not the representative of y and z x is the representative of firm and there is no any interrelation between these partners they are not related with each other no doubt they are the partner of same partnership firm but they are not represent each other so partners in the llp are the agents of the llp but are not the agent of the others partners are not personally liable for independent or unauthorized actions of other partners or their misconduct so partners only liable up to that extent which acts are authorized or delegated by partnership firm if their personal acts are there then they are personally liable so liability of partner is limited to the liability that he owes as a partner of the organization and does not extend to his individual or personal liability individual or personal liability only arise in one circumstances if you act without any delegation of power without any authorization of power so if you act in personal capacity you are personal liable if you act in the capacity of agent then limited liability partnership is responsible for the same every llp shall have at least two partners so these two partners how act and what type of functions they perform so we discuss later on but llp shall also have at least two individuals so two things you remember here one is two partners second is two individuals when we talking about the two individuals individuals it means natural born persons are here required not an artificial persons here required when we talking about the two partners partners here may be artificial person this artificial person may be here become an partner but two partners we required as an natural born person so you remember when we talking about the partners artificial person may be act as a partner but when we talking about two individuals for purpose of designated partners it means we required the individuals here individual refers to natural born persons and at least one shall be resident of indian indian resident who is here reside more than 182 days in last financial year that's the meaning of resident partner here what are the features of limited liability partnership firm so audit become mandatory for those llps whose contribution exceed 25 lakh whose contribution exceed 25 lakh or annual turnover exceed 40 lakh rupees turnover basically means you are incoming and outgoing we just from turnover how much you sell from this partnership firm how much you contribute towards economy through this partnership so there is a two limits limit of capital is here 25 lakh and limit of turnover is here 40 lakh a statement of account and solvency shall be filed every year by every llp with the registrar this declaration of solvency is just opposite of insolvency solvency indicate that llp have sufficient funds to meet their liability and insolvency means the llp not have sufficient funds to meet their liability so declaration of solvency required every time at the stipulated interval every llp with the registrar the reporting agencies here registrar of companies 
द सेंट्र गवर्नमेंट हैज पावर टू इन्वेस्टिगेट द अफेयर्स ऑफ एल एल पी इफ रिक्वायर्ड बाय डिप्यूटिंग ए कम्पिटेंट इंस्पेक्टर फॉर दिस पर्पज सो दिस वर्ड एंड पर्टिकुलरली दिस सेंटेंस इंडिकेट दैट सेंट्र गवर्नमेंट इज द रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटी इन दिस एक्ट for governing the function of llp companies and llp is just equivalent to company and in case of companies regulatory is roc and seb and central government and the same principle is also applicable here in case of llps roc is also responsible for the functioning of these llps and ministry of corporate affairs and central government through this ministry govern the functioning of llps and central government is here authorized to check through their competent inspector for this purpose of llp a partnership firm a private company and unlisted public company may convert themselves into llp so any company already existing and working as a private company and unlisted company or a partnership firm under partnership act 1932 they are allowed to be convert under this act as a limited liability partnership uh, accordance with the provisions of the llp act 2008 if the government deems fit the llp name closely resembles another incorporated llp or body corporate or funds finds the name undesirable it can issue the direction to the llp to change its name so that is also a public policy once a company or llp or any body established with some name no any other institution or body corporate use the name of existing body so that is the principle of of equity also that is the principle of public policy also and here that is the principle of business law also because once a name establish as an name of the business that's become a symbol of existence and that's a saleable item that's become a goodwill of the body corporate or the business entities and this is the saleable item when this part of goodwill is a saleable item it means no one allowed to be infringe this right of anyone either you are the individual either you are the body corporate so the llp is obliged by the sec to include llp at in the ends of its name so distinction between llp and partnership when we are talking about the partnership it means partnership firm established under indian partnership act 1932 and when we talking about the limited liability partnership it means that partnership established under 2008 act so llp is a separate legal entity this separate legal entity words indicate that separate from members separate from board of directors so two human agencies basically responsible for the functioning of body corporates and llp is equivalent to companies and that's become a separate legal entity and therefore can be sued or it can be sue other without involving the partners so when we are talking about the characteristics of the company and limited liability partnership when they obtain the certificate of incorporation they become separate from all promoters members or the board of directors and in the eyes of law they are treated as person so they are allowed to be sue and be sued so the same characteristics also available to llp also a partnership firm is not distinct from the several persons who compose it that's relates to indian partnership act 1932 but after 2008 you have an alternate you may be incorporate as a partnership firm which governed by indian partnership act 1932 or a llp that's on the discretion of the organizational members 
the partners of an llp would have limited liability limited liability is the concept of companies that's provided to the limited liability partnership firm they would not be liable beyond their money contributed by them money contributed by them it means how much they ready to invest they are only liable up to that extent if you your liability is going beyond this it means need to be proved that actions are your personal actions and they are unlimited liability only applicable where the companies incorporated as unlimited liability or the partners are the partner of partnership firm which as registered under indian partnership act 1932 the retirement or death of a partner would not dissolve it means partners come or out there is no any effect on the company death or retirement of a partner dissolve the partnership firm if the partnership firm established under 1932 act then that's a significant effect on the death or a retirement of a partner it in a partnership firm the property of the firm is the property of the individuals in case of if you are governed by 1932 act but if a partnership firms governed by 2008 act the property of the firm is the property of the body corporate the separate legal entity so there's a major difference a partnership can be formed either orally or by a deed of agreement whether registered or not whereas a llp is formed by an incorporated certificate certificate of incorporation here issued by the registrar of companies but if a partnership firm established under act 1932 that's may be orally may be governed by deed may be governed by agreement but here in this case of 2008 act that's incorporated certificate of incorporation here provided by registrar of companies a registered or unregistered partnership cannot have more than 20 partners before 2008 the maximum limit of partners were 20 partners but at present if any association wants to obtain the certificate of incorporation under limited liability partnership act 2008 then there is no any upper limit upper limit here delete they how uh, any number of persons may be become the partner in present scenario llp has perpetual succession so same facilities are available which available to the companies perpetual succession and in uh, death or insolvency of shareholder or all of them does not affect the life of the llp whereas the death or insolvency of a partner dissolves the firm unless otherwise provided and distinction between llp and the company registration is much more easy of a llp in comparison to a company no doubt company is an earlier form of business but there is a complex provisions are there for incorporation of a company and that's very simplified in case of llp in case of llp a limited liability partnership agreement is prepared whereas the article of association are prepared for a company to govern the internal relation article of association of a company govern the internal relation on the same pattern this agreement llpa limited liability partnership agreement is also govern the internal relations of the partners here internal relation of the members here govern through this article of association while a company memorandum must specify the state of incorporation and llp is not bound by this requirement 
in case of llp no need to be draft a memorandum of association as a result llp are not obliged or obligated to follow the complex procedure for changing the registered office from one state to another state otherwise in case of companies that's very difficult to follow the process of changing the registered office from one state to another state because government is also a partner in a revenue so government also protect their interest and government interest also entertained by the tribunals or court when decide to be shift the registered office from one state to another state because state government lost their revenue from shifting of uh, registered office from one state to another state in the llp act there is no such stipulation for meeting of partners either periodically or compulsorily at the year and whereas it is mandatory for the directors and shareholders to meet under the companies act so meeting formalities also very complex in case of companies but it's very simplify in case of limited liability partnership firm so there are the few things which differentiate between the same now we understand differentiation between llp and company there is a separation between management of the company and the ownership as is observed in a company all the partners unlike all the directors can take part in the day to day affairs of the llp but it's very difficult in case of companies owners are different directors are different but in case of llp owners are partner and partners may act on the behalf of partnership firm they are treated as agent of the same in case of a company no individual director can conduct the business individual director is not authorized to act in the company they are act collectively collectively but in case of llp in case of llp the partners are treated as agent and they are allowed to do these acts if authorized without authorization even they not allowed each partner has the authority to do so unless expressly prohibited by the partnership terms the companies act contemplates regulating the remuneration payable to directors whereas there is no such corresponding provision in the llp act the same could be as per the llp agreement here directors are paid according to the section 197 of the companies act 2013 but in case of llp they governed by the agreement and how much remuneration paid to the directors that's defined 5 to 11% as per section 197 but in case of llp there is no any such provision they govern by the llp agreement so there are no uh, no restriction on the borrowing's power in case of llp but in case of companies borrowing powers also governed by memorandum of association and the position of the company how much paid up share capital of the company how much free reserves are available to the company so so many factors here decide the borrowing powers of the company but this same type of provision is not applicable on the llp the llp can choose to maintain the accounts on cash basis or accrual basis whereas under the companies act accrual method is the only method to operate the accounts of company and that is also a compulsory method accrual basis method is followed in case of companies but in case of llp both options are available either you maintain your accounts book on cash basis or accrual basis so incorporation of limited liability partnership registration started in april 2009 and centralized registration at delhi was available it is completely online registration process so since its start 
the entire process available on online mode. Decentralization of this process start from June 2012. It means all ROCs are now competent to register the LLP. But before 2012, this power is only the power exercised by central registering authority. So, LLP basic requirements here mentioned here minimum two partners required and those two partners should be an individual as a designated partner. But when we are only talking about the partners, they may be individual, may be companies, may be LLP. One LLP may become the member in another LLP, member means partner. A company also become the partner in LLP, individual also become a partner in LLP and as per section 2, two designated partner we required to incorporate a LLP and these two partners should be a individual as per section 7 and individual indicate that natural born persons natural born persons are individuals and they are designated partners. One of them should be a resident in India. It means who have the proof of reside 182 days in preceding financial year. In case of company or LLP being a partner, then the nomination authorization is required from company or LLP no limit on maximum limit of partners. So, maximum limit of partners about the same, there is no any limit provided here, any number of partners may be act as a partner in limited liability partnership. So, all the partners should have their PAN number, permanent account number which issued by the uh, income tax department and designated partner should have DIN number. DIN number basically director identification number and if you have a DIN number, it means you have the qualification to become a partner in a limited liability partnership firm or you may be act as a designated partner. So, digital signature certificate for one designated partner is an essential and digital signature certificate is required to prove the genuineness of the documents which you submit for incorporation or registration. And this digital signature certificate issued by certifying authority and LLP to have an address for registered office. One office should be designated as registered office of LLP and this office we require to maintain the correspondence with the LLP. This is an essential for a business, we maintain the correspondence or communication being a regulator, being a government. If government or regulator wants to maintain the communication, they maintain through this registered office. So, contribution by partners, no minimum limit of contribution, each partner to contribute. It means you may be contribute in any way, but there is no any limit how much you contribute being a partner. Financial year the defined as per this act section 2, 1, clause 1, sub clause 1. Financial year in relation to limited liability partnership means the period from first day of April of a any year to 31st, 31st March of the following year. In case of limited liability partnership incorporated after the 30th day of September of a year, the financial year may end on the 31st day of the March of the next following year. So, you remember here financial year is also clarified by the act which period is treated as financial year. So, LLP agreement section 2 1 sub clause o define the written agreement between the partners of the limited liability partnership or between the limited liability partnership and its partner 
which determines the mutual rights and duties. No doubt, we required a agreement. If there is no any agreement, the act is available. Act govern the entire relation of the LLP. But if there is an agreement that is also helpful or the sufficient to deal with the mutual rights and duties of the partners. So, in relation to this partnership firm, two alternates are available. One either you govern by this agreement, second you govern by this act. The provision of the act also govern the same. Now, contents of LLP agreement, LLP name, address of partners and designated partners and proposed business of LLP should be mentioned in this agreement. Form of contribution and interest on contributions that is also indicate the same. Profit sharing ratio and remuneration of active partner. This is the beauty of this agreement. If you already provide this thing in black and white, there is no any chance of conflict. The chance of conflict only arise if anything not available in black and white. Profit sharing ratio if clarify, remuneration to active partner is clarify. So, in my own opinion, there is no any chance of conflict. There is no any chance of dispute among the members in limited liability partnership. Rights of partners, if no LLP agreement is framed, if agreement is not there, then rights and duties governed by schedule 1 of LLP, LLP would apply, LLP agreement would apply. LLP agreement governed by two views, one is LLP agreement, second is LLP act. If LLP act silent you govern by agreement if agreement is not there no doubt you govern by the act so process of incorporation of llp incorporation document how many required that's defined in section 11 according to section 11 of the act two or more persons associated or carrying on a lawful business so, again we emphasize on this word lawful business, it means some businesses are unlawful. So, law only protect those businesses which are governed by the policy of law, which are governed by the public policy and these businesses are lawful businesses according to law. Filing with a view to profit sh shall subscribe their names to an incorporated document filing of the incorporation document along with fee a necessary fee should be pay by the association with the registrar of the state registrar of the state means concerned registrar of the companies is who have the jurisdiction for incorporation of the llp registered office of the limited liability partnership is to be situated in whose jurisdiction that is the responsible to issue the certificate of incorporation and compliance statement in the last we required the compliance statement that required either by chartered accountant company secretary coast accountant or the advocate of high court and supreme court who have the special knowledge in this particular field they are certified that all compliance fulfilled by the association the incorporation document shall also require the form 2 as per rule 11 state the name of the limited liability partnership you first find out the name state the proposed business business which type of business this association wants to organize or the run that's also clarify state the address of registered office to maintain the communication, state the name and address of each of the persons who are to be act as a partner in the limited liability partnership on incorporation. After obtain the certificate of incorporation, every partner is here responsible person. 
and they act as an agent, agent of whom, agent of LLP, not an agent of others. So, state the name and address of the persons who are to be designated partner of the limited liability partnership on incorporation. Designated partners should be an individual. That is the again and again emphasized by this act on this point. Designated partners are such persons who are responsible for this limited liability partnership in case of any complication required. And if any information required, then authorities call these designated partners. Contains such either other information concerning the proposed limited liability partnership as may be prescribed. Under section 11.3, person makes a statement if the statement found false, knows to be false, the person who provide this information and know this fact, the information is false and does not believe the information is true. It means the one imaginary situation is here, you know the information is false and second you believe this is not true, shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 2 years. Punishment is available if you provide the wrong information or false information and penalty is also here monetary penalty 10,000 rupees and which may extend to 5 lakh rupees. So, that is the very serious offence if you provide any false information or any untrue information in case of registration or you may be say incorporation of the limited liability partnership firm. So, incorporation certificate issued by the registrar of companies under section 12 the registrar shall retain the incorporation document which submitted by this association. He shall scrutinize the entire document and if he is satisfied, satisfied here not a personal satisfaction required, satisfaction here means judicial satisfaction required. Within a period of 14 days, you retain these documents and after that, uh, you register the certificate of incorporation, incorporation document issued by ROC and this certificate no doubt become a conclusive evidence of all questions, answer of all questions. No one raised regarding the incorporation formalities either fulfill or not. Once a certificate issued by a registrar of companies that in itself prove that all formalities, formalities fulfill here. Every LLP so registered shall be assigned a LLP identification number. After introducing this concept of LLP, there is a new unique number introduced by the central government, LLP identification number should be there. And the certificate shall be conclusive evidence, conclusive evidence in the eyes of law means answer of all question. Partnership is incorporated by the name specified therein. After that, there is no any question on the establishment of this limited liability partnership firm. Under section 14 of the act describe that on getting the certificate of registration, LLP enjoy the status of body corporate. Before incorporation, you are a association. After incorporation, you are a body corporate and all the benefits available to body corporate available to this limited liability partnership and these all characteristics available after incorporation. Registered office of LLP section 13 1 is an mandatory condition LLP act states that every limited liability partnership shall have a registered office. It means one office should be required to maintain the communication with the LLP. All communication and notices may be addressed and where they shall be received. For this particular purpose, we required a office as a registered office. And changing registered office for LLP 
that is rule 17 1 rules governed by how you change a registered office limited liability partnership rule 2009 that a LLP may relocate their registered office from one location to another location as outlined in the LLP agreement. When the LLP agreement does not doesn't specify the procedure, unanimous consent from all partners is necessary to change the registered office of a new location. If you necessary provisions are not made earlier, then you govern by the unanimous consent. If unanimously partners are agree to change their registered office of LLP from one location to another location, then unanimous resolutions are fulfill the requirement. Also where the change in place of registered office is from one state to another state, the LLP having secured creditors shall also contain or obtain or procure the consent of such secured creditors. Secured creditors consent is also very important if you change your registered office from one state to another state because their rights also protected by the law. Name of LLP that is as per section 15 1 every LLP name must end with either limited liability partnership or acronym, acronym of LLP. It means abbreviated name. Section 15 2 prohibits registering an LLP with a name with a undesirable name and the names are undesirable that is deal by this act. Emblems and names prevention of improper use act 1950 clearly define no any company or LLP registered with undesirable name which resembling with already existing company name or LLP name or any name indicates that this is the department of government or indicate that Bharat state or the names of gallantry awards, Paramvir Chakra, etc. So, any company who purpose to be incorporated, they should incorporate it with a unique name which is not related with earlier body corporate. Section 16 of the LLP Act deals with reservation of name. You if reserve your name for yourself that is become a unique name and web service is provided here for the registration of name and the incorporation of limited library partnership has been filled for name reservation also then only one name can be proposed. If you wants to be reserve your name you only reserve your one name. So, changes in the name of LLP, there are the three ways for change in the name of LLP. If voluntary wishes to change its name, that is governed by section 19. If you already registered with undesirable name and you wants to change with your own wishes, it means voluntary act then governed by section 19. If central government issue the direction to LLP for change of their name that is governed by section 17. If registrar of company issue the direction for change of name then governed by section 18. So, there are the three different sections who deals with the change of name of a LLP. These three different situation deals by these three different sections. Penalty for non-compliance, fine of 10,000 minimum and 5 lakh rupees maximum and designated partner also liable for fine 10,000 rupees minimum and 1 lakh rupees maximum. For penalty for not change of name after the direction penalty for improper use of LLP. According to section 20 such persons may be subject to a fine with the minimum penalty being 
50,000 and the maximum penalty reaching up to 5 lakhs. So, partners in LLP section 21Q states that a partner means a partner who has become a partner in accordance with the LLP agreement. So, LLP agreement define who is an partner, designated partner or the other partner. Section 5 specify that both individual and body corporates become the partner. So, this is the beauty of this act section 5 and section 4. Who can be the partner in NLP? Any individual become a partner, any company become a partner, LLP already registered become a partner, LLP registered outside India become a partner and a foreign company also become a partner in the limited liability partnership form. So, the question is here who is disqualified to become a partner? Any person who belongs to the stage of unsound mind, undischarged insolvent, who declare the person is unsound mind or undischarged insolvent by competent court. Partnership firm which registered under Partnership Act 1932 and HUF Hindu undivided family, they cannot allow to become a partner in partnership firm, which incorporated under part, limited liability partnership act 2008. Designated partner defined in section 7, only natural born person become a designated partner and designated partner should govern by DPIN number. Central government through ministry of corporate affairs, this designated partner identification number, this is an essence. If you already obtain the DIN number, then no need to be obtained this DPIN number. Liability of designated partner defined in section 8, responsibility for legal compliance and liability to penalties in case of contravention of the provision of the act. Section 9 also in the favor of that, any time limited liability partnership may change the designated partner with their consent. And penalties also here provided section 7, 8 and 9 if non follow not comply, what penalties available on LLP and what penalties available on individual capacity. Section 23 LLP partners relationship that is also governed by agreement in absence of agreement this relationship governed by the provision of the act. Section 27 extent of LLP liability. It means partners are not personally liable unless and until they cross their limit of powers. Section 28 states the principle of holding out. In this anyone represent themselves as a LLP partner either by words or conduct is liable to a person who extended credit based on this representation. If the LLP benefits from this credit it is liable to the extent of that benefit. Section 30 unlimited liability in case of fraud. The liability of limited liability partnership become unlimited if this partnership firm commit a fraud. Fraud is not allowed in any circumstances. Section 31 deals with the whistle blowing in LLP. Whistle blowing in case of whistle blowing any person who wants to take the benefit, if court convince the benefit granted to the particular person. So, investigating LLP affairs section 43 central government is authorized and they may be appoint any number of persons as an officers, as an inspector to inspect the affairs of uh, limited liability partnership. So, winding up and dissolution of LLP, the, we require the procedure of law and these are the grounds. If resolution passed by the LLP, members found below than minimum number or LLP failed to pay their legal debts and on just and equitable ground, defiling, uh, default in filing statement of accounts and annual returns, these become the grounds of winding up. And in nutshell, if we conclude the summary, in conclusion, the limited liability partnership structure offers a unique blended mode of limited liability and flexibility of partnership. With the separate legal entity status, 
protection of partners assets and simplified compliance requirement of llp provide entrepreneurs professional and small to medium size enterprises with a flexible and efficient platform to conduct businesses by complying with the provision of the limited liability partnership act 2008 llp can enjoy the benefits of a corporate structure while maintaining operational flexibility and ease of management these features make the llp a best choice for those who are looking to start business operations thank you